This week, one of the key things that you want to focus on is all of the preparation for the race. One of the most important things for that is what are you going to wear? Look at the weather forecast. You should be somewhere within a couple days. You can look down and see what the temperature is going to be. Dress for about 10 degrees warmer than what the temperature says it's going to be. You're going to be generating heat and you want to account for that. If it's going to be a chilly day, you might want to dress in layers. So be thinking about that as well. The biggest thing is don't do anything new on race day. Wear things that you've trained in that you know are going to be really comfortable. And then make sure that they're available to so get them washed and lay them out a couple days in advance. So one thing that runners typically do, and I have made habit of this too, is making the flat runner. So this is my flat Becky. I'm getting ready for race day. I actually go from head to toe and think about everything that I'm going to do from my hat, my sunglasses, hair ties. I wear contacts for the race. Headphones can be really tricky. If you've been training with music or podcasts and you're planning on doing that race day, you might want to check the race website beforehand because there's a lot of races that actually don't let you wear headphones on the course for safety reasons. So be really mindful of that. If you're going to wear a watch during the race, if you're going to use any kind of technology, your phone or your headphones, make sure that they're charged up. There's nothing worse than getting to the race and realizing that your watch is about to die. I've been there, <laughs> learned that one the hard way. So make sure that that's good to go. And then keep going down, make sure you have all the pieces of your race outfit. When you pick up your bib, you'll go to packet pickup. Make sure you get there in plenty of time before they close. Most races will have packet pickup one to two days before the race. And then some smaller races will even have packet pickup the morning of the race. That can be a little more stressful depending on how many people are planning to do race day packet pickup. And again, make sure you check the race website because not every race does race day packet pickup. Most race packets will come with four safety pins. I always like to have a couple either in my car or in my race prep gear just in case if you drop one, if for some reason your packet doesn't have one, you're going to need to be able to pin your bib onto your shirt. So I actually do that the night before the race. That way there's no way I can forget my bib. <laughs> I'm going to get dressed. It's already going to be on me and I'm going to be good to go. Also on your race bib, this is just a generic bib. It doesn't have one. But a lot of the race bibs will have the timing device on the back. Make sure you don't remove it, don't bend it, don't alter it in any way because that will affect your ability to be timed for the race. As you're prepping for race week, think about what you're going to eat the night before the race and the morning of the race. If you're going to go out to eat, make sure that you're not eating a super late dinner. You want to have time to process that food. If you need reservations, make sure that you're making those well in advance. And then have your race breakfast ready to go. Again, don't try anything new race day. So think about what was working for you on your longer runs, things that settled easily in your belly. Avoid fiber this week. I know we usually tell you fiber is a good thing, but this week you want to eat easy to process foods. That way you don't have any GI issues on race day. I don't always carry water on my races, especially a shorter race. Look at the race website and know where your water stops are going to be. They should be every one to two miles, depending on the weather, depending on the race. There's going to be things on the course. Know what's going to be out there. Is it going to be Gatorade? Is it going to be water? Are they going to have snacks? I will carry to and from the race in my car, usually, a water bottle. That way, if I do want a couple sips of water or something, I have something with me. And then make sure your shoes are ready. A couple things that can be really helpful. Again, weather can be a little hit or miss on race day. If it's going to be cold, dress in layers. If you don't want to carry those extra layers as you're running or racing, you can consider something that runners call throwaway clothes. These are clothes that you're probably planning on getting rid of next time you clean out your closet anyway. So grab an old sweatshirt. You can get the little cotton dollar gloves from pretty much any store. Wear those on race day, and then as you warm up, either right before the race or in that first mile, you can take them off, toss them, make sure they're off the street, but toss them to the side. In my experience with racing, a lot of race directors will do this, but not all of them. So it depends on the race. But a lot of them will have their volunteers collect those clothes and they'll donate them after the race, which is pretty cool. If it's going to be chilly, think about keeping your head warm. So wearing an ear warmer or even a beanie can preserve some of the heat. That way you're not losing a lot of heat. All right. Now, runners, we have a couple kind of weird secrets too. So things that can be really helpful on race day. Have a little Ziploc baggie with a couple wet wipes. There's going to be porta pots at race day, but you're not always guaranteed to have toilet paper at race day. So these can be really helpful for just making sure everything is good to go before your race. If you have a race that's really windy, or especially if it's going to be wet and cold before the race, 
Garbage bags can actually be your best friends. You don't necessarily need an oversized garbage bag like this, but they're really nice if you have them. You cut armholes and a head hole into the garbage bag. And you can actually wear this really, really good at preserving heat before the race. The last thing you wanna do is lose a lot of energy, shivering and being cold and wet before the race even starts. Save yourself. Yes, you might look a little funny wearing a garbage bag on race day, but if it's cold and wet, you're probably not gonna be the only one because that's a pretty common thing that runners do. So as you're getting ready for race week, you have put in the work, trust in that effort, and just have fun with the process. So this week's word is visualize. One of the things that is really important as you go through the next couple days is thinking about how you're gonna get through the race. Think about getting up race day morning, eating your breakfast, getting dressed, getting to the race, where are you going to park? You're getting out of your car, where are you gonna hang out before the race? Gun goes off, getting excited, you're going through mile one, mile two, you're getting kind of tired, what are you gonna be thinking about? How are you gonna get yourself through that last mile? You've already done this, you've trained, you are ready for this, and then you finish. See yourself finishing. Again, you've put in the, all of the work, you put in the effort, you're gonna cross that finish line. The more you can visualize, the more you can prepare yourself mentally and physically, the better you're gonna do during race day. Visualize, prepare, and most of all, have fun on race day. We'll see you out there. And just remember, if you wanna go back through any of the details through this series, you can visit our webpage, uthealtheasttexas.com forward slash run. You can go back through any of that if you want to use it for another race, you're more than welcome to do that. You have these resources. And we will see you on race day. Thanks for going through this journey with us.